We only look at 19% of the total budget on average every year, and this new method would allow us in the interim between sessions to dive down into the base budgets and really keep these two pieces separate. We've chronicled the change of method JFAC began using this legislative session. The idea was to pass maintenance budgets, something to cover the basics, maybe mirror the previous year's request with a cost of living increase included. Then the budget committee would come back with supplemental budgets, replacements, which would include new items and requests. The point was to kind of streamline the process, but at the same time give lawmakers more time to consider baseline budgets throughout the year, as you heard Senator Herndon say. And you also heard him say, this is better than just rubber stamping 81% of budgets year over year. But there was some concern from those who wanted things to stay the same. And there was an issue during the session over whether there might be a coup in JFAC to do that. Well, there wasn't. So now that it's over, is the new process here to stay? Joe Paris spoke to one of the chairs to find out. In terms of responsibilities at the State House, Idaho's budgeting committee is probably near the top of the list. But a new process heading into the session had some worried. Now the dust has settled on 2024. I am really excited about what happened. Idaho Falls Representative Wendy Horman co-chairs the Joint Finance Appropriations Committee with Eagle Senator Scott Grow. Chair Horman believes the new process worked. We had better transparency than we've ever had before between our website and separating the base budgets from the growth budgets. We really have put into place a process where it's a building block. We, we have greater transparency and accountability now, compliance with how the money is supposed to be spent. But in the summer, we'll be looking at what's in the base. As a part of the new process, lawmakers will be digging into base budgets to make sure money is being spent correctly and effectively. We've given you money in the past for X. Did you do X? And did you get outcome Y that you said you would? And so we passed some legislation this year that will create a new uh, division in LSO called Legislative Impact Reviews. So we'll be moving in the direction of performance-based budgeting. There were critics of the processes who worried that it wouldn't really work or it wasn't fully cooked. Democrats raised a flag on the process all the way back in January. Still have no confidence that there's not any errors in there now. I'm sure there are. I don't think they're maintenance budgets. They're not what we had last year, which to me that would be a maintenance budget. And then, then it's kind of being said that we'll go back and look at the line items and replacement issues. But uh, non-discretionary items weren't put in. There were some reappropriation bills that weren't put in. So did the critics have a point in the end? In my opinion, no. We didn't lose a single budget on the House floor this year. You know, historically, it's been the House that's had trouble passing budgets. This year, it was the Senate. And they did lose a couple of budgets. We almost did in the House, but we didn't. So I think a lot of the fears that uh, were existed at the beginning of session, I, I hope have been put to rest that this is an authentic process to increase transparency and accountability for taxpayer funds. That's what we've done and we're going to continue to do more of it. Late in the session, in relation to the ITD budget, which included language to end a sale of the ITD Boise campus, there was a major JFAC question. Was the budgeting committee setting policy in an inappropriate way? <laughs> Earlier this session, it was made very clear that this is a budget committee, not a policy committee. And yet here we are ramming a piece of policy into a budget. In my opinion, your fiscal policy is your policy. And that's the job of this committee is to set fiscal policy. So anytime we put uh, restrictions or direction on how the money is to be used, that's our job. And that's what we did with ITD. So if we were going to start a new program and no, that should happen in a policy committee. But for JFAC to say, uh, here are the conditions on using the funds, that's exactly why the taxpayer sent us here. So to answer Brian's question at the top of the story, the answer is yes, the process is in place and will continue. We will follow that through the summer. Uh, thank you to Chair Horman and Chair Grow for walking us through the process, through the entire session and through the summer, through the interim. We will be following some of that dive down into the base budgets as well, Brian. But it wasn't without issues, as we Correct. heard toward the end. The vocational rehab thing, how did that turn out? So the vocational rehab situation was something we uh, reported on in terms of it came clear at the, at the end of the session that this uh, agency in Idaho, they, they didn't have the money in their 
their budget to be paying all the vendors that had services rendered. And there was an accounting issue and there's some type of an issue that has not been solved yet. But uh, uh, Chair Horman actually told me this morning and I asked her, she said this has been solved for now. There is a solution to make sure that the vendors are getting paid through the end of the year. But Brian, lawmakers, they will be coming back in January okay. to take a look at the vocational rehab situation. Again, lawmakers didn't want to punish the people that get the services from the state. At the same time, though, it does involve giving more money. And it can wait till January. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Joe.